Okay, so um, just looking at these two x values, got 2 pi over 4 and 2 pi. So I'm just going to make each tick mark pi over 4 just to make everything a little easier to follow. This is going to be 3 pi over 4. This will be uh, pi. I'll just double that. Good. 2 pi. I'm going to get uh, you know, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2. So there's a maximum at 3 pi over 4, comma 9. That's right here. And a minimum at 2 pi, comma 5. It's going to be about there. There. So it goes like this. So that's how this course it keeps going. If you keep graphing it, it'll just keep on going and going and going. And we're trying to fill all these in. We could choose between the sine and the cosine, either one we want. We're just some of the numbers are going to be a little different. B times x minus h plus k. We're going to figure out what is a. Not like what is the number, but what does it tell us about the graph? The amplitude. The amplitude. And this guy here. Well, it has something to do with the period, right? So that's it's related to the period. This one. Horizontal. Horizontal shift and this one. Yeah, for vertical shift. Vertical shift. Okay. So any of those things. Two of them are really easy. Two of them are really easy. Which two? Uh, a and K. A and K are really easy. Yeah. So what which one did you find first and how? Um, a and K because you kind of find the it's finding the midline and the pretty much what's in between nine and five is able to be seven. Okay. So K is seven. And just a reminder, if you don't remember, you just add five, 9 and 5, the maximum and minimum, divide by 2, you get. And then for A, you just do the exact opposite. You take 9 minus, uh, minus 5 and subtract. Subtract that over 2 pi. That's good. And minus 5 over 2, so that's going to give us 2. two. Uh, we might make it negative 2, like if we wanted to write it as a cosine wave, we got flipped upside down, or a sine wave, we got flipped upside down. We'll leave that for now for a little bit later. Now to find B and H, we need to find the period. Okay, so let's find the period. Uh, well, we need to find how far it is from here to there. To do that, we can figure out how far it is from here to there. And so how far is it from here to there? Five pi over four. How do you know that? Yeah, you can just add tally them up. It just goes by um, one pi. Or you can just count it? Yeah. Or you can take two pi and subtract yeah. three pi over four pi. Okay. We want to be strictly so arithmetic eight about eight it. Pi over now we're going to have eight pi, pi over four. Pi pi. Pi. Well, that's the distance between here and there. That's half of a period. So if we multiply this stuff by two, that'll be the period. Mm -hmm. And then you set that four, equal five, to two, two pi over uh, Okay, so two. the period is five pi over two. which is equal to 2 pi over b, which is equal to solve for That's how we find the period. p equals 2 pi over b. We solve for b. How do we solve for b? Multiply by b. OK, multiply by b to cancel b. And then multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. But if we just do it all at once, multiply by the reciprocal of 5 pi over 2. Multiply by 2 over 5 pi. Cancel. Over five pi. Four pi over five. Four pi over five pi. Four pi over five pi. We cancel pi. So four over five. And now we'll choose the shift and whether we are going to use sine or cosine because it kind of depends. Well, how much we have shift be? It's at its maximum. Which is what cosine is. All you maximum, do, maximum is a good reference point. Uh, all you have to do with the cosine equation yeah. is subtract the 3 pi over 4, and the maximum will be on 0, and it will be cosine. So we can imagine that this was a, a cosine wave. It got shifted to the right, and clearly we could imagine that this was at the, uh, the y axis, like it would be normally if it hadn't been shifted, and we will shift it over 3 pi over 4. So. Uh huh. So it would be harder. It'd be a little harder, mm -hmm. but not too hard. You have to either probably do the same.
same thing, but make it instead of going to three pi over four, you had to find like where it would mm -hmm. where this would be four maybe d seven. Or maybe where this would be? Yeah. Or why would be seven? Where it's like seven. Or what? Where y would be seven. Oh where yes, where y would be yeah. seven, where it would cross the midline. And that would happen at uh, some pi over uh, something or other. Pi over eight. Which is weird. Five pi over eight. Like so yeah, either way, you could you could use a sign and you have to figure out like where is this, and that could be the, the vertical shift, or the, sorry, the horizontal shift to the right, the maximum. or you could use the cosine of that. And the maximum is always a good reference point because that's exactly how they give you information about these sine and cosine waves, is the maximum and the minimum. So I guess long story short, you could always choose the cosine and then use this value on the maximum to determine if it's shifted right or left. Now if they give us a point on the left of the y-axis, then you would just say plus that amount instead of minus. But if we put it all together, we get y equals 2 <coughs> cosine of 4 fifths times x minus 3, four, 3 pi over 4 plus 7. Cosecant times a sine plus the cotangent and squared. I like to go to where we have two things multiplied together, because if they're multiplied together, then maybe we can get what one 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 half of the two. So what? You can get like one thing out of the two. One thing out of, out of these two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe like if, if we rewrite it as sine cosine. One over sine. One over sine. Times sine over one. Times sine over one. Which would be one. So it does cancel. Got one plus cotangent squared. squared. Well, I wouldn't blame you if you tried writing this as cosine squared over sine squared and tried something like that. But if you look at the first page of 14.3, well, it's the Pythagorean, Pythagorean identities. identities. There is a Pythagorean identity with cotangent squared, right? And if you see one and a plus and a something squared, or one and a minus and something squared, you see one in addition. Well, basically, you see a number plus something squared. You should. See if you can incorporate a Pythagorean identity in there. So which one is one plus cotangent squared? Cosecant squared. It actually just says one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So we can replace that one plus cotangent squared with cosecant squared. Yeah. So if we're having like, are we having close to be on this? Yep. Or will we have like the, the fundamental trigonometric identities? Uh. I can write them down. I haven't. I didn't put them on that slide, but I can write them down there before you know when I when I get there. Okay. The Pythagorean ones, the the reciprocal ones, I'm going to leave to you. Yeah. Things like cosecant is one over sine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes one over sine is cosecant. Sine over cosine is tangent. Cosine over sine is cotangent. But the Pythagorean identities, I'll, I'll go ahead and write those down, and they're on the test as well. Okay. On this section still? Trying to prove that these two are equal. We're not trying to solve anything. We're not trying to figure out what theta is or anything like that. We're just going to change some stuff around and see if we can get this side to get all simplify down and be one, so this is one. So they're all multiplied together. If they're multiplied together, it'd be, uh, it'd be hopeful that something would cancel out if we write these as fractions. So what could we write the tangent as? Sine over cosine. 
Cosecant? One over one over one. Cosine, just cosine over one. Will it cross out the sines? Sides cancel. Cosine cancel. One. One. That's one. All the things in a fraction cancel. That's a one. one. Uh, number 30. Cosine squared to both sides? Mm -hmm. And then like subtract one from both sides. Oh, okay. Like, like we'll do that and then, because it's clever, but then we'll talk about it. So we got two by itself on one side. One plus sine squared plus cosine squared. What's sine squared plus cosine squared? That's the Pythagorean identity. It's one. one. So we can replace this with one. We'll get two equals one plus one. Which is two. So when we're proving these trigonometric uh, identities, we're verifying them, like showing that both sides are equal. Um, it's a, a, like a tricky distinction, and it seems like a picky mathematician thing to do, and it, which I guess it is. Uh, when we add things to both sides, or when I reduce things to both sides, that's when we know that they're equal, and then we're trying to find like what the variable is worth. When we don't know if they're equal, then it's, it would technically be not cool to do things to both sides because that would be assuming that they're equal. But then it's kind of a, a hair thin line, and so that would that would be fine. But we could we could also do it without having to do things to both sides. We could do like um, if you look at that Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. If um, if I just subtract, because I know these are equal, so I can uh, manipulate both sides. Cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. Okay. So I can take cosine squared and replace it with one minus sine squared, replace that with one minus sine squared. So two minus one minus sine squared. Let's see what happens here if we distribute this one. Two minus one plus sine squared. 2 minus 1 is 1. And there we go. It's just like that. We could do the same thing with sine squared, replace it with, you know, manipulate this, get sine squared by itself, replace sine squared with something, and then it'll look like 2 minus sine squared. But if you did that on a test where you had cosine to both sides, that would be fine. That would be good. Any other questions? thing you do is the horizontal shift. So leave that to the end. Uh, in particular, you need to find the period before you do the horizontal shift. It's a lot easier that way. Not impossible the other way, but it's a lot easier this way. Okay, so four things to account for. What's something we could make note of right off the bat? Magnitude. 
The negative two. What would that? What's that tell us? It'll go to the right. By the way, the horizontal shift, I just said, we need oh. to last. Oh. Right. Give us a midline. Give us a midline. I like that one as the first one. Midline. Down one. Midline. Okay. Let's like check. We did that. Give us an amplitude. Give us an amplitude. Up two, up two, and down two. This will be at one, and this will be at negative three. the period B equals over B which is one half four pi is the period one two three four pi do you want to draw that shape or you just want to mark off what the period is and then well last thing almost the last thing Seems like it should move to the right, but it's the opposite of that. Um, and if you look at this class and period six, both had a good discussion about why that is. So you can look at those videos for an explanation of why it shifts left instead of what you would think. Shifting right. All right. So we'll start with uh, we know there's going to be these key points at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. And all those points are going to move to the left, pi over two. Try to make this one so that it would not too much math involved here, not too difficult to move it over. So we move this point that's at zero over to the left pi over two. Where will that put it? Negative pi over two. At negative pi over two. Uh, if I look at the mark I made here for pi, then I can aim for about halfway for negative pi over two. So that would be the left side of a period of a of a cosine wave. Next. Go to the pi and move it to the left pi over two. Where does that put it? Positive pi over four. Let's see. Pi to the left, pi over two. This is two pi over two, pi over two. Pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two. You can take advantage of that pattern that you see. Well, the cosine normally looks like this, like one period looks like that. But it's negative, so it's going to look like that. Alright. So we'll start at pi, negative pi over 2, put our uh, minimum there. Then we go up to the midline. Get a different color so it stands out a little better. Go up to our midline, put a point there. Uh, up to the maximum, put a point there. Back down to the midline. And Period starts at the bottom, goes to the top, back to the bottom again. He drops it. There we go. Any questions about that one? Cosine is 
cosine over one and secant is one over cosine. Okay, so so just move this one over, make it one over. Well, what are you doing this yeah, one? Secant. So down here mm -hmm. is one over cosine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's tangent. All right. Sine over cosine. And then there's the secant, which is 1 over sine squared x. And then there's sine, which is sine over 1 squared x. Okay. So what about up here? What happens here? They all cancel each other out. So that'll be a 1 over. Whatever, what's this term? That would become tangent squared. Tangent squared. And 1 over tangent squared is cotangent squared. And 1 plus cotangent squared x is cosine. Cosecant? Cosecant. Cosecant squared. Just done one. Keep you fresh in our minds. At uh, pi over two, we have a maximum at six. Five pi over two, so we'll try to make these marks to scale. Two, three, four, five pi over two. Fill this in, y equals a times sine or cosine, depending on what we choose, of b times x minus h plus k. Just got to figure out all of these. What's going on? Something about this equation that we can figure out. The what? The midline. The midline is what? 4. Is 4. If we take 6 plus 2 over 2, we get 4, and that is Amplitude is two. So A is two. Okay. And three would be five pi over two minus pi over two. And then you would have that underneath two pi. So B equals B equals Two minus pi over two will tell us how far it is from there to there, but that's not a full period. That's a half period. It's a half period. That would equal one, so you would multiply that by two. Well, you multiply this by two. Just that by two. Mm -hmm. This is the distance right there that I marked off, and that's half a period. Oh, so I think the full period is two pi over p. We would multiply it by two. Well, the twos can cancel. I got pi over four pi over two equals pi over two pi. Which is one half. So p is one half. In this next part, we can it can be really easy, or it can be slightly creative. What's the easy way? We can make it cosine and then go for max, and then. Minus pi over two. We'll give it a uh, horizontal shift to the right of pi over two, which means a minus pi over two. Y equals two cosine of 
1 half times x minus pi over 2 plus 4. My calculus students are getting ready for the AP test, and well, they needed to use exactly the skill here to write an equation, so that they could use that equation to do something. So, at least in the math world, this comes in handy later. Trade back and around and forward.